Hello guys, welcome to the second fat free video. So um, let's see where you should be now after the first one. If you haven't seen the first lesson, check it out. We will provide the link. I'm sure we're gonna provide the link just uh, below this video. So uh, how far we got in the last section? Aha, uh -huh. okay. So we have a project. This is the first base project and uh, we have set up a composer and added fat free to our project we created an index php and uh, included the auto load with an instance of fat free we created our first very basic route here and we run fat free so this is how far you should be and now let's make sure that our server is running because as you see here mine is not so I just come back here and find this beautiful statement with the, to start PHP built-in web server. And there you go. Let's come back here. Okay, so hello world is already here. So what to, what to do next? Let's come back to the project. And uh, now that we are in the project, let's play around with fat free a little bit. So as I mentioned before, the base class has some some variables it has a global variable called hive and we can set our globals and get our globals from the base class so let's try that so let's see now i'm, I'm gonna do like f3 which is fat free and we're gonna set a global variable we give it uh, a name which is gonna be message so this is gonna be a message and the message gonna is gonna be hello world okay and now what we're gonna do here instead of displaying this one here we are going to display get all right and then message so what we are doing here we are setting a global variable called message and this is the value of the global variable now we specify the function and uh, you probably guessed that we need to provide access to values stored in the f3 object so therefore we pass f3 to this function and we echo the global variable message this is what we are going to do so if I just refresh this you see this is a new message I, I put a capital W here with a good purpose to see the difference so this is our new message but if you need more proof I can add some more stuff refresh and you see there we go so this is a global variable okay and we have set it here and then uh, this is you, you know we set it to the to the fat free framework itself and then we got it out. So this is the way you can specify your own global variables. And you will see that this is of course very useful at any time. So it's not just like this. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so starting out with routing here, uh, you see that we can set variables. Okay, that's pretty fine. And uh, in order to, to move a little bit more closer to a structured operation, let's try to define a structure define a class and and route our server to class function and this is important because you don't want to yeah okay let, let me remove this just to stay a bit more organized here so what you don't want to do is to have a code like this that if you add more routes here then you know you don't want to have one file full of stuff like this with with, with the different uh, URI here on every line, line and a different function everywhere right it, it's gonna be pretty messy after a while I mean, you know, after a short while so what we do instead we create a class but this is gonna be just the first step 
So we're gonna move that later on. We will move these classes to separate files and so on. But first, just let's just stay simple and say that I wanna have a class that I call main, just to keep it simple. And we're gonna have a function that we call render. Render, which means, you know, to me, I always use this name because it means to me that I'm rendering a page. Okay, and in here, I'm gonna just copy and paste this here. So as I render my main class function, I just gonna echo hello world. And here, instead of the function definition, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna say main, which is the class name and the function render. So this is gonna be my route definition. And if I come back here, you see the, the, these long list of ones should disappear. Oh yeah. So now I can put it even more simple, like this. So let's see what we have done. What we did here was that we replace the function definition in the route immediately. We replace that to a class definition and a function definition of that specific class. So then, you know, I can do another function here, for example, and let's call this say hello. And let's have another message. Hello, babe, for example. <laughs> All right, then let's, let's go for another route here. So I put hello and uh, let's direct that to the other function. Okay, so then that means if I refresh this, it's gonna stay the same. Oh, sorry guys. I, um, okay, sorry about this, I messed it up. So this is hello world, and then if I say hello, we have, we got hello babe here. Hmm? Okay, so now that we have this, this order looks pretty cool. Now I'm gonna show you something very important here. And that is the base class here if we go to function run, there's gonna be a reference to another function here. Unfortunately, I forgot its name. Uh, okay, let's do it differently. So I'm actually, I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the before root and the after route functions. And here we go. Okay, this is error, this is not the one. Please let me find this for you because it's pretty important. So you see, this is in the run function, within the run function, fat3 is checking if the class where the routing is invoked, if that class has these, one of these or one or two of these functions. And this is important because you can add functionality before and after you invoke the routing call. What does it mean? It means that when the routing is happening here, if I call render, or if I call say hello, both any of these, then if I have another function here that's called before route here, like this, then this function is going to be executed before every routing call. So that means that you can have additional functionality for example, what, what I do here is usually session management. So before every routing action here like these, before every one of these function calls, I check whether that user has a valid session. 
so you know if there is a session ID and so on and that means that I can you know largely improve my security and I can largely improve my functionality as well if I define the content of this function okay for the sake of simplicity I want to show you that this really works so what I'm gonna do here we just provide a message that this is this is happening before routing so if I refresh this you see this message is displayed now if I go back to the main call here you see the same message appears also here so of course this means and this is quite logical that this is invoked every time so before this one before this one you know no matter what happens this function is always called and this code is always executed when the routing happens and then we have another function and i put this here on purpose okay because logically you know in terms of timeline it, it would happen somewhere after this two but logically these two belong together so after route here and uh, let's go for another message I'm sorry you have to watch my typing exercises all right now let's go for the next one and yeah same thing again i mean maybe just too hot here okay so i made some optical improvement as well okay so this is before routing this is after routing and in between the two we have our message so if i go back to hello here what we got is again the same thing appears also here hmm? how about this i hope you like this because this means that our controllers finally our business logic or functional logic that we add is gonna have a structure and it can have a structure because this mechanism is in place so what I can do now is to create another class that we can call something like parent like parent of all classes <laughs> all right and take these two functions copy them into the parent and say that this class extends parent hmm? how about this so if I reload this one here uh, oh man Oh, it's a reserved word. Oh, oh excuse me. I'm sorry. Let, let's call it parent controller. But you know what? Let's call it app controller. All right. I'm using reserved words. Okay, so what's happening is that we have the same message appearing here, right? So what if I create another class and we call this about page extends app controller so it extends the same class we create a function inside let's call it render yeah because this is this is how we give the structure so this is a class that has the same function render but it's going to do something different right so what we do here we say okay this is the about page okay and i won't forget the semicolon this time and then we're going to add another route here we go like get okay and then we go about and the name of this about page render. 
So now if we go here and instead of hello, we type about, then you see, we get before routing, after routing, and this is the about page. So that means that in our business logic, if we want to have some functionality that happens before each or before and after each routing action, then we can create a class that will drive, you know, where we can define these actions and we can define our other classes, our functionality classes, to extend that one specific class. And, you know, this way we can build up a modular, nice hierarchical system. So right now we, we are still in one single file, you see, this is one file. And we, we already have like three routes and, and two classes, actually three classes. And we have a hierarchy also available. So this is the beginning of a beautiful web application. So as a next step, what we're going to do, we're going to decouple functionality in different files. Uh, but, but before we do that, we, we're going to create another file or two files, which are going to be the config file and the routing config file. And these are going to be separate files. So this is going to happen in the next 